This is 1017 CHLY. Welcome to Wellness Wednesdays and the Chronic Wellness Radio Show. I'm your host, Sandra Silva, and I am coming to you live today from the studios of CHLY in Nanaimo, BC. This show is called Chronic Wellness, and chronic, by definition, is something that is ongoing or constantly reoccurring. And ongoing and reoccurring wellness is something that we are all seeking. It is my goal to bring you ideas, techniques, interviews, and inspiration to do just that. Give you the tools you need to live an empowered, thriving life. On today's program, we are going to be talking about a journey of healing, growth, and personal development. And how when we have the courage and the desire to do the work, we can recognize and break unhealthy patterns have better relationships with ourselves and others, and lead a more meaningful, passionate life. I am so excited for you to meet today's guest. Joining me in the booth today in studio is Stephanie Leach, whose life mission is about growth and learning and being the best version of herself. She has been drawn to encourage others by speaking and writing about overcoming obstacles and adversities to create the life they want to lead. I met Stephanie recently when we were both speakers on the um, speakers panel at the Caregivers Symposium here in Nanaimo. And we were sharing our experiences as caregivers. And after hearing her speak and hearing her powerful story and chatting with her at the event, I knew I wanted to have her on the program. Among Stephanie's um, talents, she is an author. And I got to discover and learn more about her through reading her chapter in Sacred Hearts Rising, Finding Your Wings. Stephanie's chapter in this compilation is called Learning to be Courageous One Lesson at a Time. Her story and her life have continued to evolve since the book has come out. And I'm really looking to our conversation. This is Chronic Wellness. Let's get started. Welcome to Chronic Wellness, Stephanie. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to have you in here in studio with me today. Oh, I am so honored to be here. Thanks so much, Sandra. Um, it's a little, um, it's a little uncomfortable to be here, but that's what um, the journey is about: pushing through um, our comfort zone to getting to the other side. Absolutely, and with a little bit of discomfort. And I mean, we're going to be talking about, about that a, a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Sometimes comes that's where that's where the growth comes, right? Oh yeah, that's where our ability to to grow and to learn and to do all of those amazing things happens for us. So I'm just having some technical difficulties. My headset has been not working, so I'm putting on a new one. And I can hear you folks loud and clear. I hope you can hear me as well. That's so much better. Um, so having, having conversations, um, sometimes people refer to them as difficult conversations, but I think they're important conversations. And, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, it's, it's the challenges that we go through um, that really show us who we are and help us get through to the other side, um, get stronger. And uh, I've, I've never really been one for, I mean, we all have to chit-chat. Right. I call it fluffy talk, <laughs> but I love to deep dive and I love to find out about other people and have some difficult conversations sometimes and find out what other people are going through in their lives and share what I'm going through. And to me, that's what life's about. Absolutely. You know, we have one life. That's all we have. That's right. So let's maximize it and let's do the things we need to do. Um, there's a lot that we're going to get into today. However, I wanted to start with something that really resonated with me. And it was at the end of your passage in the book, Sacred Hearts Rising. And you referenced a really powerful quote from Brene Brown, Mm. which is about vulnerability. And basically, vulnerability is not weakness. It's courage. And you said that as I got older, I somehow intuitively knew that being vulnerable and asking for help was not a weakness, 
but a strength that allowed me to do better and break the cycle. And I've been courageous all my life and it's made all the difference. So thank you for, I mean, thank you for writing that and thank you for being courageous to be here with me today. Thank you. Yeah. Um, wow. I still kind of well up when I think of that because mm -hmm. um, I have been vulnerable all my life yep. and I, it's just who I was. I mean, I'm strong in, in other ways, but I was always asking for help. I would, in a, mm -hmm. whether, even if I just put it out to the universe and said, you know, or uh, whatever the higher power is and said, even as a little girl, you know, I need help. I need to get beyond this. There's just, this is not right. This doesn't seem right. And so I was always putting myself out there. Um, and yeah, there was times that I, lots of times that I would wonder what other people thought. Um, and you know, when we wonder what, when we worry about what other people think, then we're holding ourselves back. Yes. It doesn't really matter what other people think. It's what my journey is, right? Um, so I've had to get through that. But I've always pushed through with being vulnerable. And until I read Brené Brown's quote, I never really, um, I never really got it. And I went, yeah, because she talks about vulnerability being, it's not a weakness. Mm -hmm. People think... In her uh, TED Talk, she asked about, um, what do you think of vulnerability? Do you think it's a weakness? And everybody put their hand up. And she said, well, you know, the people who are telling these hard stories, you think they're courageous. Because, you know, they, they all put their hands up. Yes, courageous. So, and it's the birthplace. Vulnerability is the birthplace of creativity and innovation and change. That is how people put themselves out there to the Bill Gates and the, mm -hmm. and the Steve Jobs and all these people. They are being vulnerable. And so when we become vulnerable about ourselves, then it gets a bit more personal, right? But. Absolutely. So in with this vulnerability, and you've stated that you've always been a, you know, a student of personal growth, and you've been willing to ask for help and s seek for things. Was that just part of your personality? Or did it come from a need to find some, some help? Yeah, when I was little, um, um, you know, my mom came from um, a life that, and I say in my chapter, very much my story is, um, it's kind of a love story. It's a it's of my mom and and my love for her, and knowing where she came from. Um, she came from an, a, a life that was she was abused. Um, actually, her her she watched abuse, so she was mm -hmm. emotionally abused. Her grand her mother was beaten um, to you know get her, she had her last rites a couple times read, um, and so she was in these conditions. Her father left to go to war. Um, when mom was eight years old in 1939, and her father never really came back, so she felt abandoned. So she, my mom carried on with these things, like these limiting beliefs and not good enough and being abandoned. But she comes to Oxford as a really strong, chippy person, so nobody mm -hmm. would really know it. You know, she's got that little chip on her shoulder. But when she got married to my dad, she said, I am never going to have this happen again. I am never going to be with, any, you know, with anyone who, who does that. So when they got married... She got married and she thought she was going to move to this little white picket fence and have the perfect little life. And and wherever we go, there we are. Mm -hmm. She brought herself, which is all the emotional stuff inside of her, with her in her life. And unless we heal it, we can't grow past it and leave it behind. So um, I just always felt, ever since I was a little girl, this need that something's not right. My mom was kind of, she, she had so much going on. I was very sick when I was little. And again, that was kind of like, she was bringing all this turmoil with her into mm -hmm. this new life. And I was very sick and she was always there for me. I knew she loved me, but she just, she couldn't get away from it. And um, of all the sickness and of all the negativity, like going on in her life. And uh, it just kept piling and compiling. And so I knew things were not right. I knew that I had to ask for help. I just always said, you know what, I'm going to talk to somebody about this one day. I don't, I don't know how, but I'm going to, even as a little girl, I'm going to talk because this is not right. There's something, my mom's moods would change. She, mm -hmm. I knew she loved me um, and still loves me to this day and she, um, more than life itself. But her moods would change and she would get very, very um, angry and and just uh, blow, you know. And so I didn't understand it. So I always mm -hmm. knew I had to change. There was something that was always saying, okay, I got to grow. I got to get, I got to learn about this. I got to get past this through it. 
And that's and that's amazing to have that insight whenever whenever that does happen because I know when we were talking before, we talked about how, you know, trauma can happen at any point in our lives and having being able to break the cycle by recognizing that if we want change from any given situation, that it is us that needs to change because that is the only thing that we control. So many times when people are in um, trying situations, um, whether that be with relationships or circumstances or just life in general, they get into um, looking at others for the responsibility for where they are and they try to change someone else, whether they you know, want to change someone's behavior. And, you know, it took me a long, long time to get this piece right um, in a couple of areas. But once you realize, you finally realize that holding others accountable of how we feel is a wasted effort and put the work into healing ourselves, that's where it becomes freeing. Mm, Yeah. Um, We are responsible for our own lives. Yes. Um, we may have had trauma. Trauma happened to us. Um, we may have had a tough time growing up, or we might have had um, abuse, whatever it may be. It's still up to us to change our lives. Um, we can't change anyone or anything outside of ourselves. That's when we get in trouble. We're trying to control, and we don't have the control over anything except ourselves. So I control me. All I control is how I react and how I respond to what is happening outside of me. Yes. Yes. And when and I firmly believe that when that that you mentioned the control, when we're when things are feeling out of control and we have the desire to control, we the we're the we can only um, you know, drive our own um our own thoughts and our feelings and our actions. But when we trying and reaching out and sort of playing the blame game and not taking accountability, not only does it inhibit our healing and growth, but I believe that that's where it takes such a toll on our happiness and our, and our health. That's where we end up getting sick. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Because when we're trying to control something that we have no control of, that's the whole, that's where, um, you know, people who are, well, I mean, you're trying to perfect Yes. Right. I mean, trying to perfect and put make everything pretty and put a little bow on it and make it very and just have everything. Because, um, you know, with my mom, really, what I found was that it was always her way or the wrong way. Okay. Right. And really, I know now, like, for the most part, when it comes to things that we're, you know, we're doing in everyday life, there's no wrong way. It might be your way. Mm -hmm. And I might have my way. But that's where you say, well, we'll agree to disagree. Well, you know, a person who's trying to control things and perfect things, um, they they can't let it go. And so that's, yeah, that's where we really get into trouble when we just can't let go. And that's where we can get, you know, that's the stress and we can get sickness of of all sorts of kinds of things, Uh, not to just not to mention the anxiety and the toll it takes on us. Yeah. And it's in and a lot of that, that desire and the need to controls often comes from a place of fear of, you know, I mean, that's a a really common one. And, and you, you mentioned, you described it as perfecting. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, like trying to, trying to sort of curate things, but not being able to do so. And it becomes such a negative way. And I think people also get kind of trapped in to whether they're trying to with perfectionism or perfecting or complaining or fixing that it ends up being busy work. Oh yeah. To be a distraction from actually looking at life. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. Um you know, one thing I learned a long time ago in my journey that I took um that I've taken um is that when we change our thoughts, we change our results. Yes. And our life is about really you know, thoughts, feelings and taking action. And um, again, we can't control anyone else. All I can do is take action for myself, try to put in, you know, be positive. Yeah, sure, I get down. We all get down. But it's how long do I get down for? You know, I might get down mm-hmm. for a couple of days and then I give myself a kick in the butt and say, OK, get going again. Get up into the positive yes. where the magic happens because it's not going to happen down in the bottom. 
I'm going to get more of what I, if you know, whatever I, if I'm thinking negative, I'm going to get more of that. We, we what we focus on expands. So, uh, yeah, I want to change my thoughts and change my results. Um, it's kind of like the law of attraction. Uh, people don't, you know, kind of go, oh, yeah, I'm law of attraction. But really, what we focus on expands. And a, a great attitude is is just the most important thing. Absolutely. So, yeah, our 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 thoughts also really reinforce and they become our beliefs. So when we're thinking about something where whether negative or positive, we will believe that whether we think we can or we can't, we're right. You know, oh, yeah, all yeah. that all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it's um, so when we're talking about things that we're having challenges with, I loved how you said that you'll allow yourself, you know, something something happens or feeling you allow yourself to have the feelings and the thoughts to process them but then you want to recalibrate then you want to say okay this is not where i want to remain so that's when you do your own work to get yourself back up Mm -hmm. and you know um you know over the last couple decades my work has been some really big stuff but it's also been little stuff in between when i do get down uh, you know, affirmations or, or, or reading books, um, just all sorts of, you know, just all sorts of things that would just kind of get myself recalibrated. You know, I, I've got this um, quote of Earl Nightingale's, I think I, I told you about mm-hmm. it, that I'd love to read. Um, it's on the back of my business card, actually. Uh, A great attitude does much more than turn on the lights in our world. It seems to magically connect us to all sorts of serendipitous opportunities that were somehow absent before we changed. And it's so true. I mean, it, when we're when we're down, when we're negative, and and the other thing is, you know, we can think uh we can think a positive thought. But if we're not feeling it, it com- really comes from the feeling inside. Mm-hmm. Um if I have a if I have a limiting belief that I feel not worthy of something, but I th- I'm thinking I want that. I want to I want to write a book. Mm-hmm. But if I don't feel really inside if i have a limiting belief that i don't feel worthy enough i'm probably never going to do it yeah i'm going to always sabotage myself right i'm going to get there i'm going to get close to that comfort zone but i'm not going to break through it because i'm not going to believe it i'm going to run back until i break through and and heal that negative uh, limiting belief then i can say okay this is uncomfortable but you know what i want this bad enough that I'm going to go through that damn comfort zone. I'm going to break it. What Bob Proctor calls the terror barrier. Okay. It's just, you know, it's where the magic happens, getting yep. outside that comfort zone. Um, so, yeah, that's, it's, it's, our, it's our attitudes and, yeah. I mean, that can get us through just about anything, right? Any of the, the tough times and the good times. And um, we, it's uh, our experience is so much... Uh, it's formed by how how we go into it, how we how we think, and allow ourselves. It's, it's not. Um, I know people say like, "Oh, you just want me to be happy all the time." No, it's not about being. No. It's no. not. It's not about being happy or putting on a fake smile. Mm-hmm. It's. Um, it's. You know, are you, are you solution oriented? <clears throat> are you looking towards? Do you have? Do you have a desire? Um, so, Stephanie, you talked a lot about how um, you've done. Um, you were looking for ways to to seek help along your journey and get skills and sort of things. What sort of stuff did you <laughs> did you start to um, look to to get to gain some skills in this area? Yeah, um, you know, when I first probably about when I moved to Calgary in 1992, my my husband Ken and I uh, got married uh, just a few months after, and uh, I had left. And I was the only child, so my mom was really upset, and I'd kind of deserted her, and it was her thinking. And um, I don't know, I just really felt that I needed to, again, continue this whole journey. And I was really like, it's almost like the universe was saying, okay, you want to you want to get healed? Well, I'll get you out somewhere else where you can do this work. And, um, you know, I, I started, I kind of put things out again, like I need help, I need to work on something. Uh, it's funny, I, I got in touch with a a homeopathist came into my life in regards to something kind of little with my health and and through her i'm 
I got in touch with someone else who was a practitioner of something that's called Shen. And it's kind of getting out negative emotions, kind of a body talk type thing where they mm -hmm. getting out negative emotions and putting in positive and, and talking through things. And so I worked with her for a while. And then I went kind of, you know, got into other things. I got into um, um, the law of attraction. We, uh, my husband, Ken, and I got into um, uh, Bob. Pro well, the movie came out. The secret yes you know the law yeah. of attraction and that kind of got me into thinking about things and then uh we got in with um uh, michelle and brad i don't know if they're listening but uh they're in calgary and they were bob proctor coaches so we got into a program three-year program called awareness masteries and it was weekly coaching um monthly hypnosis to help get out limiting mm -hmm. beliefs and replace them with that and then also courses there was a uh, you were born rich which is a bob proctor book um consciously creating my life there was all these courses and we really really got into it and it really helped us uh move forward and kind of catapult us um there was like um there's just oh i got into energy work um i just got into all sorts of things that just oh i've got uh eft tapping just mm -hmm. tapping for everyday life uh, if anyone want something to help with their anxiety levels or anything you just go to the tapping solution.com and they're great and they mm -hmm. can give you setups and it just really helps with um getting on the meridian points tapping on different meridian points um uh it's great a great technique um you know i even took um in 2014 i took the erickson college coaching program on site um it was a four-week program certified i didn't take it really to coach other people i took it for my own personal growth again um and just said we'll see what happens you know uh, uh oprah stuff back in change your life tv back in 1997 1998 gary zukoff's the seat of the soul i mm -hmm. uh, just all read everything i could um everything Brene brown i just did i just was always the universe was just open to me and said okay you know and all these things came and then the great thing about personal development and growth is that if something comes to you, if you if you put out there and you're and you're open like an open vessel, when something comes to you, you can decide whether you want to look at it or not, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the door opens, and I talk to somebody, and then you know I might say, no, this is really isn't for me. I'm not going to look at that. But more often than not, I would go, hey, what have I got to lose? Let's take a look. What's what's in this? So I would get little bits of everything, and there were some things that were more than others, but but. In the totality, everything helped me get through. You know, in a 20-year journey that I had of moving to Calgary in the 20 years um, from 92 to, what, 2012, um, I was growing in leaps and bounds. Um, and, but I still was dealing with my mom. And then my dad died in 2002. And so it was really challenging because she was all by herself. And I'm the only child. And she was always wanting to do it everything herself and pushing everybody away so I was having to deal with her so all of this was helping me to stay in the relationship with her when a lot of people probably would have walked away I mean mm -hmm. it's a really difficult thing and it's a hard thing to say but I don't know that everybody could have done what I did and I think people who know me well enough know that it was it was a really challenging uh, thing and and I, I was definitely not going to walk away. I was going to do everything I could. But that just took me to, you know, when we moved to Nanaimo five years ago, um, everything got stepped up. You know, eventually is when I just said, okay, the rubber's meeting the road. I'm pushing through the last stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, so. Yeah. Um, we talked to, you know, having the, the, uh, the, the curiosity first off to to look for for things and I like how you say you know you sort of put it out there to the universe and then things sort of start coming your way it's such a different way of taking on um, a project or transition as opposed to say you, you know googling I have this problem what do I do to solve like it's a completely oh. you're opening opening up yourself to be able to receive um, you know the lessons that we need when we need to hear them and it's just mm -hmm. the, the world kind of works that way if we allow it oh yeah i mean there was times i would be you know uh having a good i don't cry very often but when i'd be having a good cry in in the shower mm -hmm. and just saying you know you know god please i just need some help please i need to get through this i need to get past this and you know what i realized too um is that i needed to heal little stephanie um I went through a lot when I was little with my mom. And again, she had the best of intentions. 
um, she did the best with what she had, with the information she had, and she, you know, she did everything she could. However, little Stephanie, little mm-hmm. girl that was going through all the everyday stuff, didn't know that. All she knew was that she seemed to do everything wrong. She couldn't do anything right. Um, she just didn't have very much self worth, um, self esteem. Um, wasn't didn't seem didn't feel pretty. You know, uh, had a ch- challenging. To, wasn't perfect, wasn't good enough. Yeah. And, um, you know, we all maybe have those in little areas of our life, but I mean, I really, really had it. And so until I started living consciously and realizing that, okay, and, and getting the help to go, you know what, we need to heal, you need to heal that little girl inside before you can move to moving forward to heal, you know, to be working on the rest of me. That's so, that's so valuable and so important. And because what happens when we become adults is, you know, intellectually, we can get past things Mm. and stuff, but there's sort of like a, like muscle memory or something within our, within our body that we, we can still feel and look at things from that young child's perspective instead of what, of the adult perspective. And if we don't take the time that you, like you said, to heal, heal the, the wounds of an, of our inner childhood or experience, we can't move forward. And when we do that, what happens when you actually address and you started looking at nurturing and caring for your, your young child self? Um, well, you know, the, um, little Stephanie and any of us that are trying to heal our little, our younger selves, um, it, you know, the, our limiting beliefs are, are on, in our subconscious. Mm-hmm. We don't even realize. Yes. Right? So we could be doing things, again, that are sabotaging ourselves because we don't even know. But that little person inside is going, oh, no, I'm not going to go there. Mm-hmm. That's not safe. And we don't even know, you know, why can't I'm going after this goal? Why can't I seem to achieve it? Again, it's a it's living consciously versus versus living unconsciously. Um, and unconsciously, you just kind of go wherever the wind goes, just every lead, lead your everyday life and just do things as they come. Living consciously is saying, no, I, I want something more out of my life. I, mm-hmm. I want to, uh, this is my goal. And I, I think I have... Um, told you that I had a, I came up with, with the Bob Proctor um, work that we were doing, we came up with a, a worthy ideal. Mm-hmm. And my worthy ideal was something, it's basically, it's a goal, it's a life goal. Um, and I came up with this in 2009. And I, I kind of tweaked it a little bit, but my worthy ideal is to inspire myself and others to wake up and live a more meaningful, joyful life. Mm -hmm. So I put that out, I carefully crafted it, you know, like you would a mission statement. Um, And I I, I had direction from Michelle and Brad as we were doing our our work. And so that is what guides me in in my work. And also um, I, I was looking back on, I told you about how my word that Mm. What I wanted really is, okay, I want to feel happy. I want to feel joyful, whatever, blah, blah. Well, any, you know, that's easy to say. What do I want to feel? Exactly. And I came up with, you know what? I want to feel lighthearted. That's what I want to feel. And I was looking back on diaries that I'd had from back when we first moved to, to Calgary in 1992. And the word lighthearted kept coming up over mm. and over and over again. And I didn't even realize that I'm looking at it going, oh, my God, it's always been there. You didn't that's, recognize I it. I didn't though, yeah. recognize it until now, and that's what I. And so the feeling we know we're there when we can feel it, right? Um, yeah. One of the things that I that I really liked um, about learning um, about your story and the things that you said is that um, when we're when we're brave enough to be vulnerable, to look inside, to heal that past wounds, to to move forward, it's that's like we say that's where the magic happens but unfortunately there are some people that are not willing to go there and so they they numb their emotions Mm there they don't they want they're too fearful to explore it so what happens though if we're if we're sort of trying to protect ourselves and numb from negative emotions unfortunately 
we sometimes then it ends up numbing all of our emotions. Exactly. And again, that's something that I love that Brene Brown brought out. Um, We can't selectively numb emotions. When we numb painful emotions, we also numb the positive emotions. Wow. You know, I mean, (laughs) you know, that that is so powerful. I mean, I want this. I want to be happy. I want to be joyful. And yet I'm numbing things that I don't want. And so I'm never... I'm never going to get what I really, truly want. Mm-hmm. Um, and numbing, what do you mean by numbing? Well, you know, numbing, as Brene Brown puts it, and I, I totally agree, agree and can see it, is numbing is anything that takes us away from where we want to go and where we want to be. It can be, it can be uh, alcohol abuse or drug abuse. It can be um, food. It can be uh, too much Facebook. Just those distractions, like distract- that busy work, yeah. like needing to perfect this, and I can't, and I'm not satisfied with doing all the stuff. It's numbing and puts a and puts a buffer, yeah. and um, yeah, no, being um, I I really I really resonated with that. I mean, we're we're talking a lot about Brene Brown. I'm sure if you folks haven't <laughs> ever looked up uh, um, Brene Brown and some of her talks and her quotes and her and her books, um, they're amazing. Um, I was looking at it a little bit the other day when I was prepping for the show, and I found <clears throat> this quote of hers that I really I really love, and that's, I now see how owning our story. And loving ourselves through that process is the bravest thing that we will ever do. Mm. And owning our story, no one is looking for us to be happy, bright, shiny, perfect people. People are, it's our stories and our life experiences that make us interesting. And Mm -hmm. those need to deserve to be heard. Yeah, um, Brene is just a part of, um, you know, what I did um, in my my journey. But wow, you know, Brene is a badass. Yep. She is a badass. She is, she comes from Houston. She comes from Texas. You know, she's no woo woo, you know, but she um, is a researcher. She has a doctorate. She's a mm-hmm. researcher, professor of social work at the University of Houston. She spent more than a decade studying in vulnerability, courage, authenticity, and shame. And she is a storyteller. So it, she's got a couple of TED Talks out. Her first one was a TEDx talk in Houston from 2010 called The Power of Vulnerability. And her second one was, I think, 2012 from in California called Listening to Shame. And if you get a chance and you don't really know Brene or you haven't, mm-hmm. uh, get on YouTube because these are two amazing... St- and she talks so down to earth. I mean, she's so just down to earth and a real storyteller and her books steering greatly rising strong and all of them are just amazing and when i read books you know this is the other thing is when i when i read books like the seed of the soul by gary zukoff or untethered soul by michael singer or brené brown's books or i don't just read the book i try to take things from there and say mm-hmm. what can i do that can be actionable in my life right uh, Anybody can just read a book and go, oh, yeah, that was great. That's got some great shit in it. But, you know, and put it aside. Yeah. But it's if you actually take some stuff and say, let's try and apply this to my life and see what I can do. And it might be just a little bit. But I mean, you know what? Just for me, and I think you're getting this too, just reading, actually just reading quotes. When I, I have my favorite quotes, reading Brene's quotes, reading all sorts of quotes, they kind of help me get back into an inspired place and 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 lift me up and really i mean i have to inspire myself oh yeah that's what i'm saying my whole worthy ideal is I, I can't look to other people to inspire me sure it's great they do but i have to look to myself first and that's about being responsible for my life mm-hmm. right so yeah yeah no I, I i like that too i like the um i like uh quotes and affirmations and and you know reading um reading a book and and taking it as this form of a study not not just uh you know words on a page i know i got a lot personally from um gabrielle bernstein's the universe has got your back Mm. and um you know some of the um some of the things to just you like i always say these things often it's not a it's not a coincidence that you pick up a certain book or you're drawn to something at a certain time if you're a person that's open to um, doing some personal development, it's you just tend to find find things that that click, and um, I find that uh, I find that so fascinating. Mm, yeah, and you know what? Uh, another thing I've got here too that I love is you know really we got to be grateful. Well, we don't got to be, I guess, but it would be so much better if we could be 
grateful for the triggers that we have in our life because they are where they're telling us where we need to do our work. Ooh, let's talk about that. Ah. So, so, tri- so triggers, we all have them and, and, and it's how, so then how we feel about them, think about them and respond to them. Um, what kind of, why would we, why would we want to sort of lean into those? Oh, well, you know what, the, the triggers are what are is coming from our subconscious. Mm-hmm. They're what is really like, you know, we talk about, um, uh, uh, a parent or a spouse that we're around all the time and about how they push our buttons. Well, that's the same thing. Those are the triggers. They're pushing our buttons. Why are they pushing our buttons? Okay, so again, it's about asking questions. It, You know, I have learned, thank goodness, I've learned to when something is mal bothering me, hopefully, sometimes I might jump on it and get upset, but more often than not, I think first, or then I might, if it has caught me, I'll think afterwards, because we're all human. And I'll say, why did that get me? Why is that bothering me? And I'll ask these questions, and then I'll kind of go in, because that is where I'm going to learn to to have my energy flowing, it just, you know, it's, it's, and it's that, that's, let it go. That's so key as asking, not, um, yeah, asking, asking why. Or asking what? Not why is you know why is this happening? Asking asking what? Um, you mentioned you touched on something that I really wanted to talk about as well, which is um, letting go and surrender and expectations. Mm. Um, I know you've got some thoughts around that. Yeah, I think um, the the first thing I was going to mention here on letting go is ultimately what you know. Okay, <laughs> okay, let's go here. Um, let's do it. <laughs> It is so easy to say, let go. Okay, this is getting me a little bit here. It's so easy because I've been there. Mm -hmm. I have been there. Oh, yeah, right. Let it go. I mean, I had a little paper that was up in my, I still have it actually Mm -hmm. in my, uh, in my bathroom, surrender, let go. And it's like, oh, yeah, right. How do you do that? You, unless, it's just so difficult. And I, and I, I, I would say it all the time. And I just would say, how does one get there? I don't know. And yet, when I started doing the work this past five years, you know what? I, and, and when we first moved to Calgary, I went to um, on a yoga retreat with some friends. We went to a, a week long yoga retreat in Costa Rica, Anamaya. If anyone ever wants to go to a really fabulous uh, yoga retreat, and mm-hmm. and I I was kind of like the one. I love yoga, but I would just kind of go every once in a while. I, I'm not a real, you know. I enjoyed it when I when I went. Um, even now, I don't go as often as I probably could. But I went, and I went twice a day. I did yoga, and then with a, it was really a, this beautiful atmosphere. And near the end of that week, I was in this place where I said, "Oh my God, this is it! Mm-hmm. This is that inner peace and calm that doesn't come from anywhere outside there. It comes from inside me. Oh my God, I can get there if I, and if I never get there again in my life, I know I've been there, and so." It, I knew that I could surrender, but I didn't know how. And it wasn't until we, you know, the past, actually past, actually this past January, um, when I started getting into Michael Singer's um, work with, uh, I'd read his books, The Untethered Soul and The Path of Surrender, but he has this eight um, video um, online uh, program that is really delves into um, the surrender work and, it got me there. It got me there when I needed it the most. And I'll tell you, I know it. It's, it's amazing. hard to, it's hard to, um, to realize that when you, when you're like in the weeds and you're in the thick of it and you're, you know, especially when someone gives you that advice, well, why don't, you know, just move. It's, it's hard to do mm-hmm. until like you say something clicks and then, and then it becomes more of it's what you're drawn to. It's what you, it's, it's that then is the safe place because you mm-hmm. develop, mm-hmm. you develop and coping. Yeah. You know, um, there was one thing I was thinking of today earlier and I, we teach people how to treat us. Right. Yes. So, you know, throughout my growth journey, yeah, sure. I wanted to get to know myself better. I wanted to be able to deal with challenges better with, you know, my mom, my husband, my work. I mean, life, I had, I had things that I wanted to, to work on. I did two decades of growth. 
Um, and there's some like really kind of scary things. Like actually, like right now, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not in my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. I'm outside of my comfort zone. Again, that's what I like to say. It's where the magic happens, but we don't always get there. Sometimes we turn around. It's like Bob Proctor calls it the terror barrier. And sometimes when we get to that place, you know, we either push through or we don't. We either expand and get to where that magic happens or we don't. And you know what? If we're not ready, that's okay. We're, there's still growth that we that we can do inside that will eventually hopefully get us there but i you know i remember um a couple years ago i was i'd gone to visit my mom and you know she was getting uh, she was at 86 at the time and we had a conversation and things were really getting she two buses to get to groceries and the doctors and not letting anyone help her and i'm the only child and it was really and everything is very you know mom doesn't know how to cope with anything that or she didn't um that was unless it was negative everything was no and i'm afraid and i'm scared and i, I just didn't i there's nothing i could do to help mm -hmm. her mm -hmm. so um two years ago i finally she, we had this conversation and she didn't like how it went and she started jumping up and down and stomping her feet like a little child and i realized oh my god i can't deal with this mm -hmm. she cannot communicate properly and and it's not coming out like i mean this is i need help like I mean, I need, I was always looking, I need help now. Mm -hmm. I got back to, um, to Nanaimo and I called a clinical counselor right away. I said, I need some help, like a person one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. And I'd never really done that before, but it was like the rubber's meeting the road. I, I need to get some skills right now. And she, Anne taught me to set healthy boundaries for myself and to stand up for myself. And that took time and it took look, looking deep within. Um, she was there to help me to, to go through things. But it, again, it wasn't anyone else changing. It was me changing. And I even said to my husband, you know what? I'm the one changing. So if you you might get me, hear me being a bit more assertive than I usually am because I'm changing and I'm just starting to put up these boundaries. And um and he did, you know, and he's proud of me, but he did, you know. Um, and I took those steps. It was slow. It was a progression. But it, um, I pushed through. And I said in, in that time when I went to see Anne, worked through with Anne, then I got in with uh, other things started opening, other doors opening with um, people and getting to write the chapter and doing some speaking. It all came slowly, but it was... I was pushing through this resistance. I just said, resistance, I got to get through this resistance. And the resistance is my own resistance, right? Yes. So, yeah. I love I love that push through. And, and what came to my mind is instead of push back. Yeah. Instead, yeah. Of, instead of fighting it. And, and you know, um, healthy boundaries are so important. And again, the boundaries are not about trying to control the other person. And I'm going to throw out another Brene Brown quote because mm -hmm. I, I was reading it this morning. Can't help it. Daring to set boundaries <laughs> is about having the courage to love ourselves even when we risk disappointing others. Because it is about, oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's not about trying to control how available we are. Or, it's all, it's our self-work. Mm -hmm. And if we put a value on that, then we're then we, if it's important to us, then we're able to follow through and push through the through the tough times. And you know what I in I did very I did say um, that I was, you know, pushing through the resistance. And at that time, that's how it uh, it, it felt and how it was. I'm going to get through this. It's like a rock. I'm going to get yes. through this. But, you know, now that I'm doing the surrender work, I realize that surrender is, um, surrender and letting go is not a weakness. It's not about giving up. It is about letting go of expectations, yes. letting go of expectations. It's about not clinging to and not resisting anything. Oh, I, I'm, I've got my hands open and up. Yeah. It's about letting go of, of expectations because the expectations are what really set us up for for trouble, right? That's that's where we we just get ourselves into a pickle. 
Yeah, yeah. We get ourselves into a pickle and um, so much of it is awareness and it's, you know, it's a, it's an, it's an understanding and it's doing, um, doing that, uh, that sort of stuff. And it's not, you know, it's not about, um, what was I going to say here? Is that having, being, if there's, you know, sometimes there's, there's challenging times in circumstances or relationships or, or whatever. And if we keep going the same patterns over and over again, it gets tiresome to always be in the mindset of forgiveness. It is more empowering to be in the mindset of understanding mm-hmm. because that's when we're able to relinquish the the need to ha- hold, like you say, hold on to that outcome. Mm-hmm. You're you no longer have such a such a stranglehold on that, and you're 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 guiding yourself by how you intuitively, you know, what you've learned, how how you want to how you want to feel, and um, yeah. So so what what's your what? what's your word again? It's like Lighthearted, lighthearted, yeah, yeah, lighthearted. That's like your your mantra. Yeah, and you know, I, 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 it's probably the time now. I would think now when we're talking about the surrender work to say that anyone who knows me knows that this is pretty miraculous. Um, I still feel it's miraculous, but this past winter, when I, I, I was supposed to do, write a second chapter mm-hmm. I, I, in a in the third. Um, installment of Sacred Hearts Rising. And I was right in the weeds of what was going on with my mom. And she was really going downhill. She was pushing everyone away. She was actually starving. I'd been to the doctors. The doctors said, we can't do anything. She's maybe not real rational, but she's of sound mind. And I mean, I was just, you know, like, what can I do? There's nothing I could do, right? So um, I started getting into this eight audio um, Michael Singer um it's with sounds true. If anybody wants to do it, it is absolutely amazing. And it's got me where I am. I was doing the eighth. And what I would do is there, I would do um, one audio uh, video, I should say a week, and I would work on it. And it takes through the whole process. And it's just like you're one on one there in, in, in doing this course. And I was at the eighth week, I went in January, it was actually pardon me, March. Um, and my mom was so bad and so low, um, almost dying. I took her, I went and saw her doctor. I took her to, um, I was meditating twice a day. I, I, and then I, I got her to the hospital. She was anemic. She was 79 pounds. She had no, no, no energy left, obviously, at all. And to me, it was just that the universe was saying, okay, you're ready. You want to do this? I will get her to where she needs to be but you have to do the work. Mm-hmm. Me, I have to do the work. So I was there, bang, I get her to the hospital. We get, she gets out, she gets a transfusion, she gets out. We've got a place set up in Calgary or in Nanaimo here for her. Everything just went bang, 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 bang. It just flowed, everything mm-hmm. flowed. Everything she had questions for, I had answers to. I have never witnessed anything so just flow in my life. And she is doing, she's doing amazing now. She's now 90, almost 100 pounds. Now in that time, in three months, she broke her hip. She fell and broke her hip. Um, And I got to tell you a little story talking about surrender. Um, She she came home from the hospital and she had her little walker, which she didn't want to have. And she has since uh, ditched, but uh, she had her little walker and we're in her suite yeah, she's in an independent living community, seniors, and she's in her suite, and she wants to get a cup of coffee and go across the other side of the room. And I said, how are you going to do that? And she said, oh, well, I'm just going to go. I said, mm, I think we better come up with a plan because, you know, I know you're going to do this when I'm not here. And, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be worried about it. You're an adult. Um, I'm just going to let this go. But how, what is that going to look like? Mm-hmm. So now these are the questions I ask my mom. What does that look like? And lots of times she doesn't have the answers, but I'm there to support her and I'm there to help her see what it could look like. So um, I said she started walking across with the walker. She got her hand in the middle of the handle of the walker mm-hmm. and her cup of coffee in the other. And I said, oh, maybe we should just put a half, maybe you should just put a half a cup of coffee in there. And so she did. We just put half a cup of coffee and she's still walking with her hand in the middle. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, my God, she shouldn't be doing that. But I let it go. I yeah. said, you know what? She's an adult. She's going to do this when I'm not there. Let it go. Yeah. You know what? If she falls when I'm not there, if she dies, if she falls, if she breaks her hip again, 
I'm doing the best I can, and I'm going to let her be independent like she wants to, and I'm just going to support her as best I can. And it are, you know, most people now are getting to a point in their lives when they're seniors or are um, where they're mourning their relationship because it's not what it once was. I'm in a place right now where I am just celebrating yes. the relationship I have with my mom because we are building memories. Mm -hmm. She's coming over to my home for dinner. She never traveled in her life. For the first time in my married life, she's coming to my home for dinner. That's it is amazing. And, and it's surrender. It's, it's surrender. It's, that did the, it. so it's the surrender. It's the it's the work that you led up for that. Um, that's that. I I hope people find that in, inspiring and in, and encouraging. Um, and you know, there's more that there's so much that we can learn from one another when we when we share our stories. Stephanie, thank you so much for mm -hmm. being brave and vulnerable and coming in and chatting with us today. Is this book still available? Like, can people pick this uh, up? Or Yeah, Sacred Hearts Rising. Um, I'm in the second um, edition called Finding Your Wings. You can get it on Amazon. It was the number one bestseller uh, March 21st of this year when it was uh, launched. And um, yeah, it's a great book. There's 27 uh, chapters in there of all different people, and there's all different stories of overcoming. And um, yeah. That's so great. Yeah. So, so what sharing that? sharing your story is so powerful, and yes. that's what helped me also overcome and get to where I am and be able to surrender. I found that I uh, found that as well. You know, it's, um, and uh, when we're when we share, um, it's not uh, it helps ourselves, but also you know there's maybe that other person that it was that right time for them when they when something that they've heard someone say or share was just that one little nugget that helps propel them into their own healing journey and mm -hmm. you know like you say never never give up it's never, never too late give up. never yes. give up yeah and never give up on other people yes you know i can't never give up yeah yes i know it's uh you talked about uh, you you know your heart just open opening up and and i know that that i don't give up on people and relationships and and uh, i have belief in myself and those those that are surrounded by me. So it's such an important, such an important thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had um, Tyra, one of the girl, women people I worked with for energy profiling said to me, um, when I said uh, my, about my mom, she can't, she said, don't you say that, don't you ever say that. Um, and I realized, you know, maybe she couldn't in the past, but who am I to say what she can do in the future? And I still wasn't there yet, but Obviously, it happened. Obviously, it did. Thank you so much, Stephanie Thank Leach, you. for coming in to spend some time here with me on chronic wellness. Um, as we start to wind up, I have something that I am so proud to bring to your attention. Um, and I'm going to be talking about it more when I am back uh, next uh, next week on uh, November 20th, or in two weeks on November 27th. But coming up is I am collaborating with and co-creating um, co a workshop with Christiane Willohan from Integral Nursing on an important topic that is something that we all experience in some way throughout our lives. Um, the workshop that we're putting together is called Honoring the Journey, Building Resilience During Difficult Times or Loss. And, you know, when you think about it, look at our look at our lives, our lives here on Earth begin with us being born. They end with our death and everything in between is what makes up our life. And as a society, as families, as people, we honor, celebrate and prepare ourselves for welcoming a new life into our family. But as the circle of life approaches its final phase and we're facing death, either of our own or a loved one, we often have feelings of fear, regret, or denial. And this workshop is designed to raise your heart's vibration and explore some of the ways to approach the topic of end of life with more grace and more ease. And I feel it's really important um, for all of us to get to up our skill set level, not just for um, for being brave enough to have these conversations, um, having the courage to explore them. But when we do that, the outcome and the experience for us and our loved ones is magnified and can be really, really changed. Christy and I have our own personal stories and experiences to share with you. Um, I 
said on a couple shows ago recently, the pos- passing of my, my father at the end of September. Um, and so much of what made that an actual beautiful and honored experience was what I had learned from um, who our special guest is going to be at this workshop shop. And that is Vancouver Island's own West Coast medium, Amber Cavanaugh. She'll be coming and sharing and offering her knowledge from her and her guides on a little bit of the process of dying and the other side. And it's going to be a very powerful workshop. I'm so honored to um, be putting this together. And uh, it's kind of one of the things like Steffi and I have talk, been talking about earlier today is just like the timing of things. So mark your calendars, st- save the date. This is taking place on Saturday, December 7th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the event space upstairs at Quality Foods in Harewood. Tickets are $25 and registration is by phone, text or email. Um, we'll be putting something out there on social media soon as well as if Eventbrite. And the next time I'm in studio here on November 27th, I'll be staying, um, say, sharing more about that. So stay tuned. And in the meantime, um, keep your eyes out for honoring the journey, building resilience during difficult times or loss. Thank you so much for joining me. It has been my absolute pleasure to spend this time with you here today. I really enjoy having the conversations and the discussions that take place here, and I hope that you have found it inspiring and helpful in some way. If you would like any more information about anything you've heard on the program today, please feel free to reach out. My name is Sandra Sova. You've been listening to the Chronic Wellness Radio Show here on CHLY 101.7. Take care, everyone, and may we all be chronically well.